Hi, my name is Tiago Duarte and welcome to another video tutorial here at Telebits. In today's video, I'm going to finish the EDM from start to finish series 4. And uh, this is the final video and I'm going to talk a little bit about mastering and uh, how you can um, master or the concepts behind mastering that I use at least. And I'm going to show you the before and after of uh, mastering in the, in the final project. And uh, then at the end, I will have a, um, how can I say, a, I think it's, a, what's the name of the plugin? There is a plugin that allows us to create some uh, funky and uh, nice animations, uh, in vi video animations for this track. And I'm going to just have that. And uh, I'll, at the end of the of the video of this video, I will leave the the track, uh, the full track with the full video. And uh, before we start, I would like to ask you to subscribe and activate the notifications so that you know when I upload new videos. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. Also, if you like this content, consider supporting my channel by buying one of my products at telebits.pt or become a premium or exclusive member and you will have access to exclusive tutorials about music production and the continuations of the videos that I do here for free and also the project files of the tutorial so that you can download the project and uh, you can work, watch the video and uh, with the project in your own uh, FL Studio and uh, yeah this is it guys so let's start the tutorial so this is the project that we have so far so this is the full track here as you can see let me make it this a little bit uh, smaller so that you can uh, see everything we have here the first drop and uh, then we have a breakdown a build up and then the final drop. This music is around eight minutes. So it's one of the biggest tracks that I did so far. And uh, yeah, let's go. I will try to break down the, the mastering process that I, I did for this track. I already mastered it. And uh, you can see the full master in the premium and exclusive section. So if we go here, I usually, what I usually do when I'm mastering is I go to the busiest section in the in the track normally is this one here the, the drop uh, actually i have to change the grid here so that i can do a clean loop okay so i usually go to this track here or to this part here and uh, what i usually do is i go to the master chain so after i have my mix First, I want to guarantee that my mix is, uh, it has enough uh, space here. Uh, at this, this case here, it's uh, very close to zero. So I would probably, would be a good idea to lower it down a little bit. I did not check this in the, um, when I was mastering this one, but uh, okay. So what I have here is a parametric EQ and this parametric EQ serves to, to just, um, just to set the frequency response that I have. So everything, uh, so our human hears just listen from 20 to 20K and 20K is very high. So 20K Hertz or 20,000 Hertz and it's very high. So normally we don't even reach that, uh, that um, um, those frequencies. We cannot, uh, some, maybe some people can, but most of us cannot listen to above 18k i think it's uh, the the limit so everything above 18k i cut and uh, or everything above 18k or 18000 uh, i cut and everything below 40 hertz i cut also why i do this because i just want my frequencies the frequencies of my track to just be those ones so be between 40 and 18k and i do that just to be on a safe side so that I understand that or I know that uh, everything below 40 that some some uh, sound systems might reproduce and I'm not I, I don't have the ability to to mix that low because I don't have a, a, a very expensive sound system that allows me to understand sorry to understand what's going on in those very low frequencies what i usually do i just remove them because the main the main frequencies are a little bit above that so 
I, I just focus on that. I focus on what I can mix and what I can hear with my headphones and uh, everything uh, besides that I just cut. Then I have some compression and some saturation. And then this one here is a mid side EQ. And uh, normally with the mid side EQ, what I like to do is that to reduce a little bit of the bass in the side component. So uh, if you have this mid side EQ, you can uh, solo just the mid side or the mono side mono part of the track and the side part of the track and what I like to do uh, and I think uh, for me at least in my uh, in my um, the way I, I mix uh, I like to when I clean or when I remove most of the bass on the side part I have a more centered bass which is what I want uh, normally because if uh, you are making electronic dance music or any kind of music, normally the sound systems just reproduce bass as mono. And uh, I like my bass or I want my bass as mono as possible. I don't want too much uh, low frequency in the, um, in the sides or in the stereo field or in the stereo component of the track. So what I usually do is just to remove the, um, those frequencies on the side or on the stereo component so that we have a more centered bass and I usually more times than the than uh, not so it's it's not a rule but when I usually when I do this I feel that uh, the mix gets much more clear much more uh, focused uh, and uh, I can hear the bass better and um, it, it, it's not a rule again uh, here in music production everything uh, so we don't have rules or if we have them it's to break them so yeah you can do a lot of uh, out of the box stuff and one of the things that i do i will i will show you then i have here the ozone l8 elements and this ozone 8 element i uh, i use to mix the track so this uh, ozone 8 normally has a um a, a master or a track assistant algorithm that uh, when I click it uh, gives me some settings and since I'm not a very uh, expert in mastering I usually tend to use all this a lot because it helps me to balance my tracks and uh, again most times most of the times what what happens is that my track gets better for using the I just use the EQ settings I don't use the compressor or the maximizer uh, I don't use that I just use the EQ settings uh, and uh, I usually find myself with a lot of bass in my mixes and uh, not enough mids and highs especially the mids normally what happens is that I have not enough mids and too much bass and this is normally the curve that uh, usually happens in my mixes and I'm trying to balance those out so uh, it's always good to have this kind of um, algorithms it is what it is it's, it does not replace a, uh, how can I say a, a, um, a real mastering session or, or uh, expert it does not replace but it it's it's uh, some uh, it helps at least for us that we are bedroom music producers it helps a lot for us to to a little bit understand what's going on with our mixes and uh, it gives us a, a framework so that we can or a point of reference so that we can start mixing better and understanding where our flaws are and most 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 uh, of the times what I what he, what he, what uh, happens to me is that I have a lot of bass and not enough mids and I mids I mean between one two and three k that's when we I I see normally a, a boost and uh, again the bass uh, a, a reduction then I have split enhancer which uh, just um, just I add just a touch of enhancement with a very soft mode and this is just to enhance a little bit of the high frequencies of the of the track and then I have a boot EQ MK2 I can show you and this 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 uh, plugin here it's a free plugin you can download it and if you search for boot EQ MK2 you will find it and yeah, I, I strongly recommend this plugin but again this plugin for instance is a plugin that you can use 
that you usually use at the beginning of uh, 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 effects chain. What I mean with this is, for instance, you record some vocals and you want to add some uh, some drive, some vol um, tube saturation and um, some EQing, and you take this plugin. For instance, you record the vocal after after right after the the, the vocal. You this might be the first plugin that you you used for to add a little bit of warmth to the vocal or to the guitar or whatever or any kind of instrument and then you can eq and here i use it at the end of the my master chain and i use it because i like the way the um, the tube algorithm works and uh, it gives me some very nice warmth to the base and I can show you the before and after and it's very subtle but once you you understand or once you start listening and focus on the difference on the bass it's really it's really nice it gives a, a really nice warmth to the bass and a little bit of drive to the bass which I really enjoy and this for instance is a, a rule that um, I broke and uh, for me it works and I think it sounds really nice and uh, that's why I use it and then I use some uh, some limiting uh, limiter and ultra maximizer and this uh, as you can see I have two I don't like to over overcharge let's say one one plugin so what I usually do is I use the first limiter here to uh, cut catch the peaks so here for instance i might have like minus one or minus two db of compression and this this just serves as a, a leveling so everything uh so it's reducing the peaks uh, a little bit mostly of the kick and the snare and then i use the final ultra maximizer or the final plugin to um to give it a little bit more how can I say, it's, it's the final stage to improve or to give a little bit more gain to the track. And I like to do this in, in two separate plugins so that I don't over, over um, process just one plugin. This allows me to separate uh, the, the load of... Uh, so let's say I, I compress with the first limiter to 2 dBs and with the second one another 2 dBs that will be 4 dBs I don't like to have a compression of 4 dBs on and on the on just one plugin because that might uh, uh, produce some uh, uh, strange artifacts it might not work it might not produce anything but my experience is that whenever I have uh, a very strong load for instance especially here in the master not for instance especially here in the master i like to divide the um, the limiter load into into two plugins we do with two plugins so that they don't have to work as much they just have to compress a little bit and um, i found i found it i find it to be a little bit more smooth and uh, introduces less distortion in the final in the final um in the final track or in the final master section and this is pretty much the the way i have my my master set up i can show you so this is how it sounds let me take everything this first plugin here that is just compressed uh, taking out the the stuff that i don't want it does not has does not um, add any tonality so it's just a neutral plugin with two high cut or with a high cut and a low pass or with a low pass and a high pass so that uh, it just limits the frequency range and you can see the the difference i hope so with this we have at least i feel that the bass is more centered and uh, the stereo field it's a little bit wider because we remove a little bit of the bass from the stereo component and we bring them together to the to the uh, not not bring together but we make it more focused in the middle and also here the ozone 8 element which uh, adds a little bit of uh, eqing it uh, adds a little bit of character it adds not character but uh, it uh, balances a little bit of the frequencies so let's listen again before and after 
with this one it's not very I don't know it doesn't sound again does not sound bad but uh, I feel that uh, with all my chain it sounds a little bit more uh, concrete a little bit more cohesive and that's for me that's how I go about my mastering my tracks again I'm not a, a mastering expert by no means but uh, I have to do this because I don't. Uh, I do so many tracks. I do so many tutorials that uh, I don't. Uh, I don't want to send all my tracks to a mastering studio because that would be very, very expensive for me. So I do it. I like the way they sound, and um, this is it. If you are not in the position that you can just send all your tracks to a mastering engineer or a mastering studio. Uh, this might be a solution for you, this might work for you and uh, it might give you some insights on what you can do and uh, the process to master your tracks in a more, let's say, generic way. And because I use this, I, I use this chain, signal chain in all my tracks and uh, I like the way they sound, it's my character, it's uh, the way I find that uh, the tracks sound best for me and uh, at the end of the day this is what matters. If it sounds nice for you, that's, I think that's what matters and if people like the, the, the way, uh, if you have a good feedback, uh, that's why, why, why change. Of course you can always change to improve, but uh, don't try to find the perfect uh, formula because you will never find it and uh, you just have to go with the uh, with the uh, with the flow and uh, start mixing and mastering more and more so that you can again go through the experience have the references and uh, compare your tracks with um, uh, radio tracks or professional tracks that you know that was mastered in a very nice studio so that you can compare and uh, that's also another tip that i can um, really give you is that you have to do your homework you have to check what uh, is going on with other tracks compare your tracks with other tracks and see if you like the, the result or not and um, just uh, test different things so i'm going to do here a Hey, how can I say? Let me go. What do I want to do, Edison? And I want to show you uh, easier the before and after. So let's go here on play and let's hit record. Okay, and now let's take this out and let's record again. Okay, let's take this out and uh, you can already see that this part here it's not as uh, louder as the first one and that should give you a very rough idea of what's going on and uh, let's see let's listen to let's listen to the both parts It's very, it's, it might not very, be a very big difference, but um, the thing here is uh, the master part, I, uh, for me, it feels a little bit more wide, more, more with the bass more center, more focused, and there are a little bit more, you can understand better every sound. And that's, I think, what uh, it's, it's all about. If you have a good mix, mastering, so uh, uh, one, one thing that I could say also about mastering is that mastering is not intended to uh, fix your mix. You must have a, a nice mix and after you have a nice mix, you will go through the master to polish, to make it sound even better. But uh, usually you don't want to do uh, fixing, you don't want to fix your mix in the mastering. So focus first on having a nice mix and then after that, uh, you can work on your mastering and uh, mastering should should um, be used to 
make your track sound better, not to fix your track. And that's that's something that uh, I think if, if you focus first on having a good mix and then go to the master, you will find yourself in a more um, in a better position to have a nice track. So let's listen again. It's a very big difference. Both on, on uh, sound, on, on, on uh, dynamic range, and also on um, uh, expression so the first one sounds much more wide much more open than the first than the second one without the plugins and that's pretty much it for my uh for my mastering uh chain and uh again these are just some tips that um, i hope you can uh, learn from and have some mindsets and this is my mindset behind mastering and uh yeah i really enjoyed this track let me know what you find or if you like this track or not. I will right now, after after the end of this uh, tutorial, I will have a a video with a, with a, with a full track with some uh, some uh, nice effects that I will do here in FL Studio. And uh, let me know if also you want to see how how to make some videos in uh, with uh, with FL Studio because we have a visualizer that we can create some really nice uh, um, animations and uh, if you want to see how how I can uh, do something let me know and uh, I will I will do a tutorial on that so this is it guys I hope you enjoyed this video I hope it was helpful I hope you learned something and I hope you also like the track and um, yeah if you are new here uh, to this channel subscribe and activate the notification so that you know when i upload new videos and if you have any questions just leave a comment below and if you'd like to support this channel consider buying one of my products at dailybeats.pt or become a premium or exclusive member and you will have access to exclusive tutorials about music production and also to the project files of these uh, projects that i do here so that sorry so that you can uh, work with uh, with the project and the video at the same time and watch sorry and watch the video at the same time so this is it guys this is the end of uh, edm from start to finish series four and this is the track go and uh, here it goes the um, the full track with uh, with a, a nice animation so see you in the next one peace